Hello, I'm Paul Thomas, and I'm one of the cheesemaking tutors at the School of Artisan Food. For the past 10 years, I've been working as a head cheesemaker before setting up as a freelance dairy technical consultant. Today, I'm going to show you how to make some simple dairy products that you can make in your own home. So here I'm going to show you how to make some yoghurt at home. Some people might have their own yoghurt maker, which is a great piece of kit if you're going to be making quite a lot of yoghurt. But there are simpler and cheaper ways of making yoghurt at home. And a wide-necked thermos flask is one of those ways. To make yoghurt, we're going to need some cream and we're going to need some milk. Here I have 100 millilitres of cream and 500 millilitres of milk. I'm going to pour that into a pan and I'm going to heat that up to at least 90 degrees. The reason that we take the milk and cream mixture up to 90 degrees is that without it, we'd find that the yoghurt that we made was quite stringy in texture. The heating of the milk will denature a lot of the proteins that would cause the stringy defect in the yoghurt. Once we've reached 90 degrees, we could cool it immediately, or we could hold that temperature for around about four or five minutes, evaporating off more moisture and concentrating the solids in the milk. So once the milk and cream mixture has cooled down to around about uh, 45, 46 degrees, we'll be ready to add the starter culture. And in this case, the starter culture is simply more yogurt. We want to use around about 2.5% of the volume of milk and cream that we used, which in this case would be around about one tablespoon of yogurt. Now we're going to pour the milk, cream and yogurt mixture into the flask. Seal the lid. It's important we do this quite quickly. We don't want to lose too much heat from the milk mixture when it goes into the flask. The bacteria that are present in the yogurt that we need to actually start to thicken the milk mixture won't grow at temperatures much below 40 degrees. So we need to make sure that we work quickly and get the mixture into the flask. So the yogurt's now been incubating undisturbed for around about four hours. And if I take off the lid, we now have yogurt. But at this stage, there's still quite a lot of moisture in there and it would be good if we could get some of that off. So here I've got some blue disposable cheesecloth lining a sieve. You don't need to use disposable cheesecloth, some cotton sheet uh, would be perfectly fine, but I'd boil it up first of all in order to sterilise it. So we're going to take the yoghurt, and pour it into the sieve. So once the yoghurt's been poured into the sieve, we should see whey starting to drain out from the bottom. And the yoghurt will now go into the fridge to drain down and become more solid, like Greek yoghurt, over the next hour or two. So the yoghurt's now been straining in the fridge for around about half an hour. And you see that quite a lot of the whey from the yoghurt has come off. Uh, the yoghurt itself is becoming a little bit thicker. You could eat it as it is now, but I think I'd prefer to thicken it a little bit longer. So I'll pop that back in the fridge for another hour or two. The length of time that you leave the yoghurt to drain down is purely a matter of personal preference. Here I've turned the yoghurt out into a bowl uh, when it's reached the texture that I prefer. At this stage you could eat it as it is, drizzled with honey, or perhaps mix in some fruit purees if you prefer a flavoured yoghurt. But for me, this is perfect homemade yoghurt. 